those who missed it and post it. Yeah. So welcome, welcome everyone. Good night. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, my name is Brother Ray Winter. This is my wife Anne Winter, and we're happy that you're here to be a part of this. Um, we want to parenting uh, support group. It's right. a parenting support and prayer group, mm -hmm. and we really believe in the power of prayer for our children, for our families. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we think that it's very important that we come together for this. Yes. So, yeah. Yes. So without any other delay, let's open with a word of prayer, and then we'll get into the discussion. Our kind of love and Father, we thank you so much for bringing each and every one of us here tonight. Be with those who are on their way. Bless the technology, the systems. May everything work well. And fill us all with your Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, as we come together as parents, we ask that you give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, and spiritual discernment so that we could train up our children the right way according to your will. Be with us now and in everything that we do. We thank you so much, Lord, for everything. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So you want to do a little introduction about is all about and then we'll yeah yeah yeah, yeah so uh this uh, group is for parents and uh so like i said we believe in the power of praying together mm -hmm. prayer is so 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 uh important uh, many times as parents uh, especially moms you know, we like to read books about parenting, about, you know, for health, or mm -hmm. even watching videos. I watch videos. And this is great. As long as it's in line with the Bible, it's mm -hmm. great. Uh, but we underestimate the power of prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, we underestimate the power of going to the one who is the best parent mm -hmm. ever. God right. is the best parent and he knows everything. Uh, so it's very important that we go to him mm -hmm. for help because we can do the, our best. We can do, uh, you know, our, our best in the world, but without the power of God, it will be in vain. It won't mm -hmm. last. So we need mm -hmm. God's power mm -hmm. and there is pr uh, power in praying together. Amen. Amen. That's well said. And uh, just to know that um, I just want to share two Bible verses before we get into like a little more in depth. Um, so the first verse I want to share with you is Psalms 127.3. And the verse says, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So the verse is basically telling us that when we have children, it is a blessing. God blesses us with children. So children are an heritage. God has given, to, given children to us as a gift, a blessing to us. It's our job now to train up these children the right way how we god would want us to raise these children and one of the ways that would help us to raise these children the right way would be through prayer by constant communication with god talking with god and praying for our children praying over our family so that god can always dwell with us and be with us to give us wisdom knowledge and understanding and spiritual discernment of how to raise our children amen um you want to go with something before I jump into my other verse? Yeah. Um, so like my husband said, power of prayer mm -hmm. is very, very important. And we know for sure that it's God's will mm -hmm. to save our children. It's not like if we ask God for help, the one mm -hmm. who made the universe, the stars, and the little things mm -hmm. in the world. You know, if we ask him, he will help us because mm -hmm. it's his will. He wants to save our children. He wants to save us. So, um, whatever we ask according to his will, mm -hmm. we know that his answer is yes all the time. So sometimes we misunderstand um, and underestimate this thing of mm -hmm. prayer. Yeah, amen. That's right. And then we also have another verse, Ephesians 6, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Ephesians 6, 1 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. And many times we want our children to obey us. But are we, we are children of God. We're his children. Are we obeying God? Are we following what God wants for us as the parents? Are we praying to God, communicating with God, allowing God to lead us? Now, if we're God's children and we're praying to God and we're allowing God to lead us, that same reflective character will reflect on our children and our children would see that Christ-like character in us and they would be obedient to us and it, they would follow us because by practice, we become what we behold. We would also be passing on the same 
uh, like teachings or attitudes to our children of how we behold Christ. And by beholding Christ, we become changed. And by our children beholding or change character, they become changed. So we have to remember that. And we do this through prayer, communicating with God to build up that spiritual relationship. Yeah, it's true. And uh, it makes me think about that. <clears throat> there is a verse. Uh, the verse, I think, is John. John in chapter 15 mm -hmm. says, Jesus said, if you abide in me, mm -hmm. you know, like it's kind of a condition like we must abide. John 15, 5. Yeah. yeah, John 15, 5, it says, seven. it says, he that abided in me bring forth much fruit. Yeah, we, right. we need to abide in Jesus mm -hmm. as parents um, to uh, to obey him, uh, to pray for help, because without his help, we can't perfectly obey him, but surrendering to him, trusting him, having faith. And uh, and like my husband said, then the children mm -hmm. uh, will be blessed by that. Yeah, and many times we want to do things our way. We want to train our children our way. And we're not, we're all in this together. This is something we're all in it together. And we're all asking for that guidance from God. But sometimes we need to just listen to God, pray to God, and let God give us the instructions of how we need to uh, raise our children. Also, we need to pray for, pray for our family and read the word so that God will show us through the word how we can help our children. And there's something that my mother used to say, and I think you said as well, that a praying mother, my mother used to always say, the prayers of a mother for her children mm -hmm. never goes on empty ears. Mm -hmm. So the prayer of a mother is very, very strong, especially for her children. Yeah, amen. That's right, that's right. And also when we pray in Jesus' name, there is power mm -hmm. over the enemy. When we pray in the name of Jesus, we have authorities like we release the power mm -hmm. you know to god um mm -hmm. you know there is authority in the name of jesus so uh we should not under underestimate that again the name of jesus Amen. and uh yeah claiming god's promises i want you to share a verse um so it's second peter chapter one verse four it says whereby are given unto us exceeding great and mm -hmm. precious promises that by this you might be partakers of the divine nature, mm -hmm. having escaped the corruption that is in the world through mm -hmm. lust. Mm -hmm. So we have exceeding and great and precious promises of God. And these promises are for us. That if we abide in Christ, if we trust him, if we follow him, mm -hmm. and we surrender to him, when we claim his promises, mm -hmm. when we claim these promises for our children, and we can be specific, God will answer these prayers. Mm -hmm. And we can even encourage our children to pray. That's mm -hmm. a good thing, to pray actually for themselves and to claim these Bible promises. Mm -hmm. And uh, I personally started to do something. I have a little book that I get at Dollar Tree and I have uh, the name of my children, Nelson. And then later, a few pages later, I have Noah and I take notes, you know, of the maybe little things that I want to pray for, for them. And I mm -hmm. put Bible promises. You know, so it helps me. It helps me to um to see when God answers prayers or to see, you know, what I want to pray for. It's very helpful. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So I don't know, do you have anything else you want to say? You want to transition yeah. to questions? Well, I just want to say a, little, a few more things, but I don't want to do all the no, talking. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I just say a few more things. Um, yeah, we need to have faith. Mm -hmm. We need to have faith when we pray and believe. Um, because, uh, you know, the Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please him. Mm -hmm. uh, and we need to diligently seek God. And, um, and on faith, the Bible yeah. also says in James, faith without works is dead. But the works that it's talking about is believing. I'll try to find it. So, but you can go on in the meantime while I find that. Yes, yeah, so we need to have the faith and the works of believing that God is able to help us. So yes. when we pray... And I always say that pray believing that God will answer your prayers, mm -hmm. but he will answer your prayers according to his will, yeah. not to what you want the answer to be, to what God wants the answer to be for you and your family. That's right. And he will answer in this time too. Sometimes mm -hmm. we get discouraged very easily because we don't get the answer quickly. That's right. But God knows the time. God sometimes maybe you want to test or maybe you're looking to happen for a good mm -hmm. reason. So we need to be patient and uh, 
and there is a verse in James 5, chapter 5, which is somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, verse 16, it says, uh, so it starts with, confess your faults one to one another and pray one for another mm -hmm. that you may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails mm -hmm. much. And uh, well, we are righteous by faith, and mm -hmm. then God help us to do the works. Yeah. But um, the fervent prayer it means that we need to be fervent, perseverant. Even in um, Ephesians six, you know, when it talks about the armor of God, mm -hmm. at the end it says, "Praying for all saints, mm -hmm. always with all perseverance." So we yes. need to be perseverant. And if we have to pray every day for several months, or maybe sometimes years, I heard stories of. Uh, mm -hmm. People who prayed for years for their children or for their family and God and sons in this time. And I'm a living testimony of that because my parents prayed for me a very long time. And then yeah. I realized how much their prayer really worked out. Yeah. So don't give up. Keep praying for your family, for your yeah. children. Mm -hmm. Pray over them as well. Um, God will make a way for your yeah. prayers. Yeah, exactly. All right. You so, no, I'm good. I'm good because... Uh, we can proceed to question yeah. time if you if you have if you don't have anything else. Yeah, yeah, we can go to um question time. Okay. Uh, or we can discuss. So if you have any questions or anything you want to discuss, mm -hmm. please feel free to unmute and ask your questions, or we can discuss. Just one thing though, um, we don't you can we can discuss, but we don't want to discuss too much of like personal in-depth things yes, yes. like little um, details children's life <laughs> right so, but <laughs> it, it can be an open thing yeah, but if yeah. it's a specific thing that, um because we have you, the children yeah, you don't know who are, they might hear so and you don't want other people to know what's going on in your home yeah. so mm -hmm. it can we yes. can discuss but not don't say it in the detail or you can say it in a third person it's like sensitive yeah right it's if it's so sensitive, sensitive don't <laughs> open it yeah but you can be like specific right exactly know? Exactly. Right. So if you have any question or anything you want to discuss, please feel free to unmute. Yeah. This is our question and discussion time. Yeah. Or anything I have else? a question. This okay. is Sister Julie. Yeah, Sister Julie. Um things, uh activities, mm -hmm. um Sabbath afternoon after church, because we have mm -hmm. a small church. Mm -hmm. and there's not many children there so um sometimes we don't even go to church or mm -hmm. we go to another church if they have an activity for children so what kind of things um because today uh, the children well my children I should say they want to go on the computer mm -hmm. and they like to watch bible stories for me, I would rather read and and um, sometimes we color, you know, and do things. So I'm looking for some other activities or if you know any um, groups uh, of like that children are doing things on Sabbath mm -hmm. afternoon, especially because my children are under teenage years. So mm -hmm. I'm looking for suggestions. That's a good question, and that's something that uh, yeah, I, like I know a lot. Yeah, we have to mm -hmm. pray about this because since I when I became a Christian and I learned about you know the Sabbath and it's, it's such a great blessing and I had to pray and also I well I read books <laughs> and uh, I don't say I have the answer, but for us, for example, uh, well we we try to take walk in nature if the weather is okay or do a nature puzzle. Or like you said, read books. Sometimes we would put some. It happened. We put TV and we put um, Christian programs for the children. You know, we don't. We try not to do it too long. But we would love, yeah, we would love if children can come together. Like now the days are getting nice. We can go join somewhere and do a little hike with them and uh, organize something so they can enjoy the things of nature, or like some kind of. Uh, ministry like some uh, last Sabbath we went to the nursing home and they enjoyed it mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah it's sensitive because it's supposed to be a, a day of delight for the children too and and God made them playful so we, we don't want them to go crazy 
and at the same time, we want them to enjoy and, you know, as you have play in them. So it's so, a good question. So Isaiah 58, 13 said, if thou turn away thy foot from thy Sabbath, from doing thy own pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy day of the Lord. So the Sabbath is a delight. It's called a delight. It's a mm -hmm. day where for kids especially, and um, you have to find a way to make the Sabbath a blessing for the children. You have to remember that they're kids. They're not adults like us. So it will be hard for them to uh, settle themselves. So what you can do, um, like when the weather is nice, you can go take a nature walk. And it's said that it's good for the children to do a nature walk on the Sabbath. This way they can see the beauty of God in nature. It's talked about that. It, it's talked about that. One of my favorite writers now wrote that, that for children, the Sabbath should be a time when they spend it in nature. Even us, because we can relate to nature and we can see the power of God in nature. Also for us, if the weather is bad, we come home, we may put on um, Amazing Facts Kids. Uh, or sometimes we come home, we put Amazing Facts or it is written, John Bradshaw. We watch a sermon or we watch uh, um, Amazing Facts Children um, children or Trabian Children Program. We do that. Um, All right, we do, sometimes we do coloring as well. And then sometimes if the weather is good, we take a walk in the yard, we talk. But the, the thing is that you don't want the Sabbath to feel boring to them. You want to make it a day where they look forward to it. Like you have to implement things that they must be excited about the Sabbath. Yeah. Um, but it's different from the yes. other days. Yes, it should be different from the other days. It shouldn't be the same as the other days. So they must want that day more than the other days. Yeah, but it's, uh, it takes, you know, like it takes prayer because for me yeah. it has been challenging and, you know, it has been challenging sometimes. I uh, was wondering, okay, what can they do? What can't they do? What, yeah. and it's, you know, God is good. He guided us. You know, that's one, of the, that's one of the biggest things that we run into with the Sabbath, even as adults. We spend so much time looking at what we can't, what we cannot do yeah. That it takes away our mind from what we can do. Mm -hmm. If if we have a prayer relationship with Christ, if we're in communion with Christ by prayer, and we're doing certain things, the Holy Spirit will tell us. You will feel it in your conscience because the Holy Spirit is telling you, oh, you shouldn't do that. But for me, I, I used to be like that, what we should not do. But don't focus on what you shouldn't, what you should not do. That that was the Pharisees' mentality. They always want to, oh, you should not do this. You should not do this. That's why when Jesus came and said, even they didn't understand the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But look at the things that you can do that to make the yeah. Sabbath more a blessing and a delight and happy time for you as a family. Remember, yeah. it's about the family. It's not about outside. It's your family. What would fit for your family? Yeah, every time you just Right. Because what might fit for my family might be fit for your family. So you have to make sure it fits for your family. Yeah, and uh, Jesus is the best example mm -hmm. uh, on Sabbath where he went to the synagogue mm -hmm. and he preached. But we see he was also uh, in nature with his disciples, you know, mm -hmm. when they were working in the, um, in the grain field. In the grain field, and they even pick things. You know, some people might say, oh, they pick things. Yeah. But they pick but they, things. They they were, the they Pharisees just, did say that. Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. the Pharisees did say they pick grain on the Sabbath. That's why he said yeah, yeah. the Sabbath was made for men. Yeah. See? And they, they basically they took a nature walk mm -hmm. and uh, Jesus did this healing a lot. So he was in contact with other people that were not even going to the synagogue. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes, you know, I'm thinking, you know, going to see people where mm -hmm. they are. But, you know, with children, is we got to be wise and be prayerful. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, we need to pray and uh, and exchange ideas. That would be great to us mm -hmm. somewhere where we can... <laughs> Do a yeah. list of ideas. ideas and, yeah. yeah. I don't know if that answered your question or give you an idea. But started off with um nature walks. Nature walks is very good. Especially as the weather gets nicer, the nature walks is very good. And we can argue, yeah, we can organize that. Meeting between mm -hmm. <laughs> something like that. We've done a lot of things of what you say. It's just so difficult. Um, but I, I'll keep um I'll keep praying on it. That's you know, it. Uh, yeah. 
I'll yes. keep praying on it. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Any other yeah. questions or thoughts? I have an go on. I was gonna say about um the do you have any um uh, thought on, on the organized clubs that they make at the church? The adventures and pathfinders. Do you have any thoughts on those uh, clubs for the children? In 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 the sense of uh, if if they're gonna have that. I mean, at our church, or like what? Uh, about just it? if it's it's a good thing for them. Oh. Oh yeah. If if part finders is a good thing. Yeah, I think me personally, I would I would. I think it's good, but still, I would examine. I, I do you say examine? Examine, yeah. Test it can kind of like mm -hmm. go with them for the first two session maybe and see how it goes because right. I, I think every church is different. Mm -hmm. You might go to a church that has a very good program that is biblical, and then you might have a church mm -hmm. that is not biblical really or mixed truth, and you know, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So. Yeah. Yeah, I, I remember when I when I went to Part Finders, I've learned a lot from Part Finders. Like I've learned a lot about camping, uh surviving out wild, um, certain a lot of things. But the the Part Finders now, when I, I've seen how it is, it doesn't look the same as how it was in the old days. So mm -hmm. if I would go with them for the first few months to see how it how the program is, mm -hmm. to see what activities they're doing. Yeah. And if it's a good structured church. Uh, with the, with Pathfinders, I think it's good for the children because Pathfinder yeah, kind of give me a lot of discipline. I learned how to iron my clothes, keep my shoes clean because we had, we would have um, drill inspections. So I learned how to dress me, take care of myself through Pathfinders. So, um, but like I said, the structure now is a little bit different. We just have yeah. to find a, a church that has a good Pathfinder structure. Yeah, I'm sure there are some um good price finder club still and mm -hmm. uh, we gotta just see you know see for ourselves and we are the parents and we are the ones that got put us to to uh, make sure our children are fine so mm -hmm. we gotta check for ourselves I think. yeah yeah good question sister julie any other questions sister julie just bring them keep them coming <laughs> or if sister janet has a question Sheldon and Matthew, Hello. welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for coming on. So if there's any other questions, just feel free, feel free to ask about the question. We were talking about prayer tonight and mm -hmm. how prayer is important for the family. And um, we need to be praying now more than ever for our families, especially in these times, because there's so much things in the world and the devil is finding ways of, how, of trying to tap into our homes through mm -hmm. social media, through friends, through peers, through everywhere you go. Even sometimes in the church, you find these things coming in. So we have to pray that the angels always protect and surround our family to keep us and our children in the arms and, and the protection of Christ. Yeah, make it short. Um, what we were saying, uh, we were, so I just going to mention the, 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 the points very quickly. Uh, we were saying that it's important to pray in mm -hmm. Jesus' name because there is power in the name of Jesus mm -hmm. against the enemy. Uh, we can get claim God's promises mm -hmm. uh, for us because God, he always keeps his promises. Uh, we need to abide in Christ, to abide in him, to follow him, to trust him, uh, to obey him and ask him for help mm -hmm. and, and have faith as well. We need to have faith when we pray. And then we were uh, talking about uh, being fervent in prayer, mm -hmm. uh, being fervent, uh, not giving up, uh, because God knows the time and the hour when mm -hmm. it's best. He knows everything. So we must trust him and not be discouraged. You know, so, so yeah, we were talking about that. And we were talking about the power of praying together. And there is a, a verse in Deuteronomy that says, uh, one man should um, chase away a thousand, two mm -hmm. men should chase away 10,000. So when people come together, it's like, so there's power. There's power. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah. So any other questions before we transition to prayer? Our next segment will be prayer. But if you have questions, please feel free to ask questions. Mm 